Cause I made a new party. Let me find out you got banned, man, for sending these niggas some messages, bro. Nah, we not playing with no random. Oh. Yeah, the dude that playing with us? Yo, what's up, Jazai? Yeah, Jay Gardson. We just rotate, we just play defense like normal. Good rotation. Bro, this shit is so slow, bro. Yeah. Damn, it was milk, like milk, bro. Yo, what's good, Moko? Big assistant. What's up, boo? What's up, girl? Good shot. Good shot. Good boy. All right, um, what's up? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna let you play in a little bit. But still. I got you. The pass. Pass on me. It's on the cut. Wait, what's your passing on? Yeah, 70 and damn, I can't catch that. That's still high though. I mean, it ain't high like that, but. Yeah, I should be able to catch that. Yeah, I don't, I'm mother one, I just couldn't catch that shit. All right, JG, you got to get your mic before we can go to play pro I don't know. What's up, JG? You a ghost? Ooh, you ghost. Go scare mommy. Well, hey, JG, make a party and invite us then. Or invite me, and I invite you, son. If you can't come to mine, invite me. Because um, the uh, first of all, I, I, it sounds strange in hindsight. I found making four hundred fifty million dollars easy, easy, and I wanted to do something more with my life. 
And so when I got into the financial coaching, I wanted to change the fabric of financial coaching, which I have. And I wanted to be known as the, uh, well, and now that's what they call me, the greatest of all time. But this was just me flapping my mouth 25 years ago. Now I am the greatest of all time, vis-a-vis -vis creating wealth through people like yourselves. And uh, I, went, you know, I wanted to leave that legacy. And I wanted people, like I'm from the body, I'm from a real uh, rough background, been in jail five times, did a lot of ugly things, uh, and the, um, which I don't recommend to anybody. Uh, but I, I'm glad it happened to me because I know what the other side, like some of you have never been, you know, kicked in the teeth. I know what it is to be kicked in the teeth and my teeth be on the, on the pavement. I know what that feels like. I know the humiliation. Forget the pain. You get over the pain. And I wanted the poor kids to understand that they, they had a, a methodology. There was a methodology. Uh, used by one of them, and I'm considered for poor, although it's I'm hard, it's hard pressed for me to say how, they don't believe that I'm poor now, but I mean, the, uh, that was once poor and got in a lot of trouble, you can do it if you want to do it bad enough. The operative part of that little description is if you want it bad enough. Muhammad Ali, which used to be Cassius Clay, the great fighter, arguably one of the greatest fighters I've ever, he was talking shit since he's 14, 15 years old, I'm the greatest before he ever had a professional fight. In athletics, it's more accepted to talk shit. Okay? You've been trained, keep your head down, don't embarrass yourself, don't embarrass the family, don't say things that may not happen. And I do just the opposite. I tell you to set goals beyond your lifetime. I, t I tell you to set goals as soon as humanly possible. When kids come to me, they want to make t a million, 10 million, you know, and, and then when they've made 100 million, they say, Mr. Pena, we would have never, ever dreamt that we could create 100 million until we met you. You will never exceed your highest expectation. You will never exceed your highest, craziest thought. Never. That's a guarantee. And so then why, other than you've been taught by your parents in conventional wisdom, to set low goals? They've told you, the theory is, you set low goals so then you can uh, stair-step achievement and you won't be as disappointed when you fail. That's the theory. But normally the person or the persons uh, that have um, uh, proposed that theory are poor, are poor. And um, the, um, but QLA's there. Most people who come to the castle pay about 16,000 euros, it's about euros. That's a lot of money for most people. Are they poor? How do they get the money to go to the castle? And why they do well, it? Well, the castle is sold out for a year, so don't, don't bother going to the bank and going borrowing any money. Please, don't bother my office. I'm not here to sell you a castle, Simon, believe me. Um, but they fall into three categories, the kids that come to the castle. And I call you all kids because I'm either old enough to be your father or grandfather, okay? Now, in an audience I was a couple days ago, there were actually two guys my age. So, and one was, couldn't hear, and he was, he was trying to go like this, you know, but he says, I can hear you, Mr. Pena. Well, that's good, because it's very seldom that somebody in the audience can't hear me. So, they fall into three categories. Ten years ago, my demographics were between uh, the uh, 40 and 55, meaning the people that came were interested in me. Ten years later, my demographics are 15 to 35. 15 to 35. Now, the people that come, a third of them uh, are, uh, don't have a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of. They don't have two euros to rub together. They don't have two euros. They've either taken a mortgage out on their house, uh, and in the United States, they can even get student loans, which I don't understand that exactly. But I mean, they get student loans. Um, and of that third, half are still in school, living at home. Okay. The next third have businesses. 
that really aren't real businesses. All they are is they've produced a job for themselves, a job for their wife, a job for their, you know, their cousins. They're doing between three, four, five hundred thousand euros a year in, in business and maybe two million euros in business. They've got a business that barely gets along. A third of them have been reasonably successful vis-a-vis -vis conventional wisdom. They've got businesses five, 10, 15, 20 million. We've had some people that actually had some serious money. So those third, but that's no representation of who's successful. Because the third that already have money figure out this is too much fucking work. Okay. The third that's in between, uh, 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 life has a way of catching up. Their mother is dying of cancer. They're, 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 and I, I'm not saying this because it's funny. Their nine-year-old daughter gets pregnant. Nine. And their whole life, you have a nine-year-old daughter that gets pregnant and you keep her, your whole life changes. I've seen it with my own eyes. Okay. And the third, the kids have less baggage. We have kids, the only asset they have is a 15-speed bicycle, which kind of puts the same category you're in, a 15-speed bicycle. For those of you that have done any research at all, on my website, we have teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet planes. Teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet planes. They understand that? I think they do. Okay. You should be embarrassed. Teenage multimillionaires flying around in their own jet plane. And he's the one that had the 15 speed bicycle. That's why I use it a lot. He's not a teenager anymore. He's 21. If he were standing right here, Josh Kim, he's, uh, he's uh, half Korean, half um, uh, Caucasian. But the one thing that they all have in common is they're fucking hungry. Hungry for a better life. Hungry for change. Hungry for the tough love their parents didn't give them. So is that what it needs? You, you have to be hungry? You, you need to feel the pain? Uh, growth only comes through pain. Speak, uh, I, uh, I don't, you probably don't have any athletes in the audience. But anyway, for those that have, uh, that have read about being an athlete, okay? Okay, uh, no pain, no gain. It's the same in life. Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Dan Pena, Ted Turner, amongst a whole bunch of others, all had one thing in common. We all slept in our office the first five or ten years of our business life. Slept in our office the five, first five or ten years of our business life. I think we would like to know how does it work, the QLA principle, okay. the basics. What can you teach you? There's in? only one moving part to the QLA model. How does it work? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. There's only one moving part. If it was a, a two moving part, I couldn't explain it to the Dutch guys. But it's, since it's only got one moving part, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you can get this. Motivated seller. Now, I know it's not politically correct to talk about having sex with a thousand partners anymore. But rock stars got nothing on Dan Pena. I got more ass than a toilet seat at a fucking bus station. And I was proud of it. How? Because I asked. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. And you've been taught all your life not to ask. To politically fit in. So the one moving part is a motivated seller. Now let's say that this table are all in IT. This table is in manufacturing. This table is in um, um, uh, medical services. And this table is in uh, construction. Of these five tables or five industries I just mentioned, you're looking for a seller that is between 55 and 70. He has no line of succession, meaning he has nobody to leave the business to. Because most children today don't want to have anything to do with their parents' business. There's no succession planning. So there's got a guy 
68 years old. He's been in the business 35 years. He's built up a construction company to 5 million euros a year. He makes seven, let's make it even numbers, a million euros a year out of 5 million, which would be a great business. That'd be 20%. What's he going to do when he drops dead? He's going to drop dead, right? And who's he going to leave the business to? The hag he calls his wife. And what is she going to do with the business? Fuck all nothing. She's hoping she dies before him, so she doesn't have to be stuck with the business. Why don't the owners plan for death? Because nobody wants to talk about it. Why don't owners have a succession plan, meaning when I die, this is what's going to happen to the business? Because they don't want to talk about it. It's one of the things you don't talk about. It's the only thing I talk about. Okay, so you got a motivated seller. He's got a construction company, 5 million euros a year revenue, total revenue. He makes 1 million after tax. That is your prospect. That is the person you call on. And on the site, we show you how to call on these people, how to find them. How to find them. And seven or eight times out of 10, you can finance the entire transaction with no equity. You can finance the entire transaction with commercial debt, or as you say in this country, debt. Commercial debt. Meaning, you don't have to have any fucking money. Now, Nyarota, which I had the privilege of teaching at back in the 90s, Erasmus, which I had the privilege of teaching at back in the 90s, and the University of Amsterdam, which I had the privilege of teaching at uh, back in the 90s, I used to ask the question, how many classes have you had in buying a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had in selling a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had in leadership? Nobody raised their hand. Now I'm here to tell, because I checked last week, those three fine universities still don't have any classes in those three subjects. So they're not teaching you how to sell your business. They're not teaching you how to buy a business. Arguably, they only teach you how to run a business. So we have a motivated seller that has not planned, had any succession plan, and that wants out, and that they will look at you with tears in their eyes, rolling down their cheeks. You're their savior. Because otherwise, they're going to die, and most of the owners that I just described in those five industries are going to die intestate. That means without a will. Why don't they have a will? For the same reason I just said, because they don't want to talk about dying. So what happens when John dies and leaves Mary his business without a will? It goes into probate, or whatever the equivalent there is in this country, which means it's in limbo. And it's going to be there between six and 36 months. But you step in like a knight on a white charging horse to save them. And that's the methodology we use. And this methodology has been around about 140 years. And the first person to think of this, and it wasn't Dan Pena, Andrew Carnegie. The wee Scott, arguably the first really wealthy guy on the planet who happens to coincidentally come from right down the road from where I live in Scotland. That's what QLA is. It shows you how to go in and buy the businesses for little or no money out of your own pocket and using commercial debt. And what Trump has done to assist you, even though you may not like him, is because now interest rates are at the lowest in 5,000 years. And I hear they're going to go lower in America. And when America sneezes, Holland catches a cold. So if interest rates go lower in America, what do you think is going to happen here? Interest rates are going to go lower. And that's what the QLA is, and it's a simple process. And he followed QLA. This is his third time around. Uh, but he bought businesses with no money, right? Right? I mean, he did it. Uh, and it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's nothing really hard. Now, why doesn't ING Bank tell you this? Why doesn't Rabo tell you this? And whatever the other Dutch banks are, right? Because this methodology I just described to you has little or no fees. I'm going to repeat myself. Little or no fees. There's no investment banking fee. There's no management fee. There's no succession fee because you're using commercial debt. And that's why they don't tell you. 
But then, is it still that easy as it was 20 years ago? Yes. You go well, to the I bank. Well, it's easier now because there's more money on the street. But you go to the bank and you say that I want to have your money. Well, no, no, you don't. No, you borrow. You're you going to borrow. borrow money. <laughs> Just like you did. Yeah, but but that was 20 years ago, other time. And what I did, I did what he told me, and I didn't know better. So I went in ING Bank. I asked for half a million and went out with the money, because you told me. You're not going to leave without the money. You don't leave without the money or a check or a wire check. You sit there and you, until they're embarrassed. You go in when the fucking bank opens up, nine o'clock you open, 10, and you don't leave the goddamn place until you got money in your pocket. I mean, literally. Now, see, most of you wouldn't do that because you'd be embarrassed. And it's still that it's better to go to a new bank? Oh, yeah. A now, when, when a new ING branch opens up in wherever, okay, there's three things that you know for sure. Number one, they've done a lot, a lot of marketing surveys that they need a branch there. Number two, the bank branch has a lot, a lot of money, ING Bank. And number three, they have no customers. That new branch does not have one customer when it opens up the first day on a Monday morning. Except for you, because you're going to be the first one in the door. I used to go around in my limousine. I'd go to, from branch to branch to branch. Boss, wake up, we're here. And I, I mean, I go through the same bullshit, the same pitch, the same, which are all on my site free. And I wouldn't leave without it. And, and we give you a script. What is your legal lending limit? What's your personal lending limit? The, the bank officer. You, you probably don't even know, if you ever dealt with a bank, what the legal lending limit of the bank is. You probably don't even know what the banker's legal lending limit. And uh, the banker will say, well, I can, I can sign for 50,000. You personally can sign for 50,000. What a lucky day for the two of us. All I need is 49.5. <laughs> what a lucky fucking day. And we have kids doing this in the Netherlands today. Today. So even since all the rules in the financial system has changed, you say it's still oh, yeah. easy. And the reason why it's easier because from 20 years ago, there's probably a hundred times more cash trying to get out of the bank doors into our pockets now than when you did it 20 years ago. For every dollar, for every euro you put in a bank, they lend out between 20 and 40 euros for every euro you put in, depending on the structure depending on the balance sheet of the bank. So for every thousand euros you deposit, they can land out between 20,000 and 40,000 euros. And uh, when I was here teaching in the late 90s, uh, I had a speech, it was called Holland is not heaven. And uh, I, I was a member uh, of the Amstel Club uh, and uh, the, uh, I'm getting up and making a speech and and Mr. Heineken stood up and said, uh, Mr. Pena, uh, I don't mean to be rude or interrupt you, but could you speak about something else? And uh, I said, well, Mr. Heineken, but why? He says, we all know that, but the Dutch don't like to face up to the truth. Can we talk about something else that's happier for us? And so then the then chairman of ING Bank stood up and said, well, Mr. Pena, let's talk about prostitution. We all understand that. And so, and I didn't know much about prostitution, uh, uh, at least the way it is legalized here. Uh, and so uh, we, I talked another 10 or 15 minutes, and then we retired to the bar and we had drinks. Uh, but, the, uh, but now the difference is there's so much more money. And from when you did it, the interest rates are probably one-fifth as high as they were when you cut the money from the bank. Why commercial debt and no private equity or venture capital? Because when you take private equity uh, and um, venture capital, uh, they're going to want the lion's share of the ownership of the business. The famous story is when uh, Steve Jobs and Wozniak started Apple, they got an investment of $91,000 from a guy named Markulis. He took a third of the equity, and Wozniak and uh, Jobs took a third each. Now, that $90,000, they take 90% and leave 10% to the, uh, the founders or the owners. Um, but it's, it's, it's too easy. It's too easy. Um, and when you know that the banks, 75% of all bank loans 
on the planet are made the last 90 days of the calendar year. I'm going to say it again. 75% of all bank loans made in the world are made the last 90 days of the year. Why? Because they want to get the money out the door so they can pay Christmas bonuses. Now, that's a pretty shitty reason. But if the bankers were fucking smart, they wouldn't be fucking bankers, would they? I'm going to say it again slow because you're Dutch. 75% of all money loans in the entire world are made the last 90 days of the calendar year. For that very reason. A rebound. Good shot. A rebound. Great shot. Good teamwork. That's on me, I reach. Good shot. Can you work? What's up? Okay, I'm gonna get it for you. They did right wing then route. Good pass. The box out. Good D. It's still. You might miss that one. What's up? Huh? You want to milk? Nah, that's on me. So I'm gonna stop in the middle, Jay Z. Good day. Made it. I mm. I ain't I, I didn't put my hand up. Rebound. Green. The rebound. Great. <laughs> I was going through it. <laughs> Man. Hey, that boy right there. Man. Fuck. You gotta hit this one. Good bucket, good bucket, good bucket. That's all. Hey, <laughs> 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 Webby. Hey, Mississippi make you feel sad, don't it? Uh uh, no. That ain't no pouch. <laughs> Daddy. You can't do that. Daddy. 
What? Listen, bro, I be feeling make you feel bad, bro. Come on, get tight. Boy, I ain't going, going through the motions. <laughs> huh? Yeah.